Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Prior to the season three update dropping in Warzone 2 and MW2, I made a whole video talking about the massive expectations that the season three update had. Obviously, there were a lot of things that were previewed and revealed and confirmed for season three that players have been wanting for quite some time. Now, to be fair, we've only seen part of the season three update go live, right? We've seen the launch update, which obviously includes the bulk of the content for the season, but we still have season three reloaded, and that's going to introduce things like plus like Warzone ranked include a little bit more content and whatnot and obviously more patch notes and bug fixes and ideally more gameplay updates but initially what we got with season three seemed to be a lot of under delivering uh obviously pre-launch there was hype like I said there were high expectations because of what was leaked and revealed and confirmed uh, I also was a part of a developer call just prior to season three and if you guys follow me on Twitter which if you don't you should at who's immortal the link is always down in the description below uh I was tweeting out that yeah you know in this developer call there was a lot of positive changes talked about it seemed like they were really chart starting to turn things around and really focus on a lot of the core issues that the community has been bringing up and that was a similar sentiment with a lot of other creators I'm sure you guys follow the other uh you know folks in the community as well that talk about similar things and for the most part everyone is kind of saying yeah this call it's got a lot of potential you know they've said that some big changes are coming you know they talked about how movement was going to be adjusted and how sliding was going to feel better how that'd be more fluid to maneuver across the map how they were going to reduce some times for uh you know the uh delay when you dolphin dive and then you can't fire your gun how they were going to focus on the close range ttk and we got changes to all of that it was just like seemed like kind of the bare minimum right uh the difference in the delay when you're dolphin diving and you have to wait to fire it's noticeable but it's not drastic uh the sliding differences i won't lie don't really feel all that different like if you didn't tell me that there were differences in the sliding in season three and season two i wouldn't be able to tell you that there were differences that were actually made in game it seemed like there was going to be larger changes to these categories and uh you know areas of focus and what we got was the bare minimum like i said uh ttk has been talked about a lot in these uh calls where they're saying you know long range ttk we're pretty comfortable with that there's a few outliers but for the most part we like where the long range ttk is at close range is really our focus yet they haven't really done much in the way of changing a lot of the close range weapons like this last update they mentioned they wanted to attack more on the close range ttk and balance it out more and they ended up nerfing some of the headshot multipliers on the smgs but i mean the top close range ttk weapons are things like the 74u and the chimera and some of the shotguns and or pistols and a lot of that stuff was wasn't changed it was just more so the weapons that already were very competitive with one another yes they were all fast killing uh like the mp5 and the vaz nev and whatnot but uh you know they weren't like the main issues there with that close range ttk and quite frankly i feel like that's more of a health issue than anything it's not going to be changed by you know nerfing a few weapons here and there it's probably going to end up having to be changed by nerfing a ton of things simultaneously right rather than just increasing the health like what we saw before which seemed to be like a uh, much better solution but regardless it seemed like at least from those portions of the call it was a lot of over promising and under delivering unfortunately which really sucks because quite frankly these developer calls that i am very fortunate to be able to sit in on and i'm always grateful to have an opportunity to one have a conversation with the devs about the state of the game get information to relate to you guys about things to look out for but also relay your feedback and your guys thoughts and my thoughts to the devs directly they are so incredibly productive but in this case it did seem like there was a lot of things that were not conveyed in the correct ways that led us to believe season three was going to be a lot more than what it ended up being right there's also things in other areas of the game that are wildly disappointing with the season three update dmz in specific it's pay to win now like they they added in these active duty slots which really are just created classes for dmz it seems like and there's a fourth one available but it's only available through a store bundle that you have to buy which completely goes against every other like property and mechanic of the game it's supposed to be free to play and have a low entry barrier it's supposed to be welcoming towards the community and then they lock major gameplay features behind you having to spend money in the game is that's just like tone deaf to me it's that's so dumb I don't know why why that is the way that that was uh you know implemented you could have done it where you had to play with a certain amount of active duty slots for a certain amount of time you know drop into 15 matches with active duty slot one and then another 15 with two and then another 15 with three and then you get access to number four 
give players a reason to grind the mode, not jump in and spend money. Um, so that, that I'm not going to lie. That really annoys me with DMZ. Uh, other major issues with this game. Obviously, there's going to be bug uh, bugs and glitches constantly. So bug fixes are going to be a huge part of the patch notes and gameplay changes, right? Which obviously is needed. There's plenty of game breaking issues and exploits in this game that need attention and they for the most part do a good job with that stuff in the patch notes right but then you look at the core problems with the game and yes bugs and glitches are problems with the game but gameplay can only be as fun as the game allows it to be at its core aka if you can't play the game well you're not going to have fun if the game can't perform at a decent level consistently you're not going to have fun you can change the ttk all you want you can bring in new weapons all you want but gameplay stability servers physically being able to play the game is a huge 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 issue the servers in this game are some of the worst that we've had in some time it seems like maybe it's uh sort of amplified by the just constant noise of the community this year because there's uh you know a large chunk that are very unhappy with the state of warzone 2 and mw2 but the fact that we've had server issues from day one of each game that seem like they still linger to this day and new ones are always being introduced is also ridiculously frustrating right we've seen so many updates go out now that address crashing which was a huge issue which i'll admit is much much better now i don't crash nearly as often anymore but what i do experience almost every single game is someone in my party living in a different dimension because they're lagging because the servers are so unstable or the entire server dropping for a few seconds or we're turning into a microsoft powerpoint for a few seconds maybe that's just the connection with the microsoft acquisition coming they want to introduce the powerpoint upgrade where everyone is playing at two frames per second for like 10 seconds at the start of every single game server stability is something that needed to be addressed multiple multiple seasons ago and it's still a huge issue and like i said it doesn't matter how many cool changes are made to gameplay or how much cool content is introduced if you can't experience that content consistently at a stable pace right all throughout the match so the update itself definitely seemed like it was overhyped a bit from all areas you know i think it's something that creators have realized a lot myself included here uh gonna be much more um i guess cautious moving forward and i think that's a similar sentiment with a lot of the other people who are actively involved in these calls and whatnot um yes they all always promise cool things and they always tease cool things and some of it is very cool other parts where you get some uh, ambiguous aspects of it where we don't get all the details until the patch notes come out and then the patch notes don't seem to indicate as many cool changes or as much of said cool change as we thought then just makes all of it look bad right so between the uh you know under delivering in that aspect a lot of the main issues still not being tackled it seems like we're seeing just updates on updates on updates that miss the mark and then are constantly overshadowed by the things that they missed or the other issues and problems that they introduced there's just a uh you know a lot to be had from these updates that's just not there there's so much potential and it's just not being reached time and time and time again like i said before season three i viewed this in the eyes of a lot of players as a make or break update it was already uh, in a rough state all games were in a rough state before the update this update said to uh you know deliver in a lot of areas and while we're still waiting on some of those areas which i do think warzone plunder is going to uh you know have a lot of players have more of an interest in the game because there's going to be that casual approach and ranked is going to be really cool and i'm personally very much so looking forward to that uh there's still a lot riding on those in particular but just from half the update that we've seen already season three did not you know attack where it needed to attack it, it definitely missed the mark in some areas so i'm hopeful cautiously optimistic that things could change as we continue to give more community feedback in a constructive and respectful way uh but at the same time you know this game is almost halfway over at this point and we're still with uh, a lot of the issues that we had back at the start too that still have yet to be addressed so it might be too late in some areas there um <laughs> that said i mean I, I mainly wanted to make this video because a lot of you guys were asking you know zach what are your thoughts on season three do you think it uh met expectations do you think it fell short all sorts of stuff like that and because we're always analyzing the state of the game here, and it's something that we've talked about, especially a ton this year, I uh, definitely felt like it was needed to give my two cents here on what I think missed the mark, what was, you know, solid, and hopefully what can still help turn things around a bit with what's to come with season three reloaded in a few weeks time. But that being said, that's going to wrap things up for this one. If you guys enjoyed the video, let me know by dropping a like on it. And if you're new here, feel free to hit that subscribe button, turn on those post notifications. That way you can always guarantee you're up to date with all things going on in COD. But once again, thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, take it easy. Have an awesome rest of your day. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.